Everything's good? Perfect. Awesome. Okay, then you know what? I'll just I'll introduce the team in the meantime while everyone else gets settled in. So um, my name's Christian, and this is the rest of my team here, and we've got Jeff Nansen in the back and his legal team over there. Um, I own CPG Recruitment, and uh, we are a recruiting company, and obviously Jeff's the lawyer is going to make sure you don't get sued when you fire somebody. So um, that's that's pretty much it for the introductions. Today's, for this is probably, I'm trying to set the bar high of this will be the most fun human resources conversation you'll ever have because I know in the human resources world, it's not, there's nothing exciting about it. So my, my intention for you guys today is I, I want you guys, I'm going to be giving you lots of tips and tricks of what you could do to find the right person, make sure you don't hire the wrong person, make sure you're not making the mistakes that we see every day of why people leave your business. Um, and at the same time, Jeff's going to dive into all the legal stuff that is too complicated for me to explain. So um, with that said, my fullest intention is little, if I can get you guys to go back to the office today with one little trick up your sleeve, that's what I'm trying to accomplish. Fair? So it's going to be very interactive. Do we have, I just, I like feeling out the crowd in the beginning. So um, as far as uh, people's responsibilities, positions, who here is a human resources person? HR? Okay. We got HR, HR. Do we have any other executives like managers, general managers, executives in the room? Okay. And then do we have any business owners? Any business owners? One, two. Okay. Perfect. And show of hands, you guys all saw the same, the same kind of ad pop up for what we're doing here. Um, as far as the reason why you came today, the, from the recruitment side, if, is that the sole, the sole reason that caught your attention? Anyone show hands? Recruitment versus retention, employee retention. Retention comes up and then the legal, the legal side of it. Okay. So pretty even room more on retention and, and legal. Perfect. Okay. So, um, I'm wondering what other is, is there anybody hiring right now currently? And is there anybody struggling with hiring right now? Okay. And then is there anybody that someone just quit on them over the last two weeks and you're like, damn it, I got to find somebody ASAP and now you got to deal with it. Right. Is there anybody that's getting sued from a wrongful dismissal or anything? <laughs> you, you got, we got a couple people getting sued. Okay, it's okay, guys. This is a, a by the way, our conversation is is very private to us. So so um, no one knows that who's here. This is because I like getting very intimate in the conversation. So your guys' privacy is there. So feel free to just shout out. Only people in this room. What happens in this room stays in this room. So um, with that said, uh, let's just dive into it. Go go to a couple slides. The very first thing that I like getting into. So we're going to start, the journey is going to be from the beginning of I need to hire to then the hiring portion, the onboarding, and then all the way up until end of, of the termination aspect or end of, of the relationship. So that's how we're going to transition. So the first thing I'm going to talk about is recruitment. And I'm going to tell you guys already that um, everyone gets it wrong. Okay. Everyone gets it wrong in the aspect of their mindset. So let me, let me ask this. Are there any HR people here that are working on a position right now that the hiring manager could be somebody who is, I know, I know the industry you guys are in, it could be someone from the shop floor saying, I need something very specific, but you as the HR person don't quite understand the role and what that person actually does. Is that scenario happening here? Yes. Yes. Okay. So, so you're looking to hire for somebody, but you actually don't even know what these people do. That is the beginning of everything. And that is what to me is the root cause of all failure. So, um, of as far as hiring the wrong person, or as far as just overwhelming yourself and constantly interviewing and interviewing and interviewing, and just can't seem to be finding the right person. That happens. Is, am I relating to people right now with what I'm talking about? Yes. Okay. Perfect. So, um, the biggest thing you have to think of recruitment as marketing. Forget the word recruitment. Actually, throw out recruitment. You have to think marketing um, in order to fill a position, it changes your mindset on everything. So in marketing, the very first question we ask for is, is what are we trying to do? So when you're trying to hire for a position as an HR person, whoever, someone's going to come to your desk saying, I need to hire somebody that happens all the time to everybody here. Right? So when someone comes to you saying, I need to hire for this position, the most important thing you could ask is why and tell me more and actually having a full meeting on that position to understand what's the problem in the business and why we're considering to hire somebody. Why? The why is very important. When you understand the why as to 
while you're hiring. So now the transition will start coming in with research. So we need a certain position, like we, we pointed out. A few of you don't even understand some of the positions you're working on. The research element, which literally will take 15 minutes of your time, which will make your day so much better, is the most important part. You as the recruiter, as the HR person, knowing what you're about to go through. So researching the position with the HR manager. You have to do this together with the person who needs somebody in the company. With the HR, there has to be a meeting held. That's like tip number one. Okay. Do you guys, is there any show of hands? Is there anybody that already kind of does that? Or is that, can we all, is there some people could admit that, Hey, we could do better at that, right? Tip number one. Perfect. There, you could go home now and I've given you something you could work on. <laughs> so I promise you, I'd give you something that you could take back right away. Step one, have a meeting with the HR manager. What we do before we work on any position, we will refuse to send any resumes to anybody unless I meet hiring managers and truly understand why they are hiring. Okay, that's step one. Now we dive into it. Again, this is a marketing campaign, so you've got to do some research. So some of the key points that we research is, well, this position title, what's the competitive salary, for example, or, or um, more even, actually, no, sorry, that's the next step. The researching of the position is actually for you as the HR major to understand what it is. So if you don't know, Give me, what's the most complicated position we could, give me a position in a manufacturing facility. Something complicated, like a, like a CNC guy or, or, um, let's talk CNC machinists. We all have CNC machinists here? Yes? Okay. At one point in time, I didn't know what a CNC machinist did. Actually doing the research. Go on YouTube. It's a wonderful place. Okay. Or the best thing is take the hiring manager that knows the person who is a great CNC machinist, go to the shop floor, and tell them, explain to me what you do. Take your best CNC machinist that's been there for 20 years because we all know we want another person like them and spend a half hour of them saying, explain to me what you do. And then now you'll have a better understanding of the position. That's step one. Step two, now you got to identify your target audience. you got to find a bunch of CNC machinists, right? You have to ask yourself, well, where are they? And who are they? And all the different versions of them. And who do we actually want? Sometimes for some business, they are okay with someone junior versus someone more senior. Sometimes it's, we must have someone more senior because we have too many juniors. You have to have these conversations because one big mistake I always find businesses doing, we actually, it drives us crazy when someone gives us a big range and they don't know what they want and you give them, okay, well, why don't we give them someone who's junior? And then they say, actually, I want someone senior. Then you give them someone senior and they say, actually, I want someone junior. Doesn't that drive you crazy? It drives you crazy all the time. So, and, and it'll drive you guys crazy because I'm sure you guys have had similar interactions with people where you think you found someone, the resume looks great, your first interview is great, but then someone later on in the interview process says, no, actually, I want something else. I changed my mind. Sometimes taking a step and saying, I'm going to wait a couple of days before you act and act to make sure you make a decision on what you actually want will save you in the long run. So that's tip number two. Um, Next is the amount of times I see someone's looking for the unicorn, the unicorn of I need this perfect person, but I'm only willing to pay this. So whereas you, you, you can't compete with it. Market research. We're going to dive into a couple of different tools you could use to make sure that at the end of the day with compensation and work hours and benefits, et cetera, your overall package that you'd be meeting great people all day long, but if you keep losing them to someone else in the industry because their package is better, you need to at least equip yourself in the beginning to know what you're signing up for. Okay. Um, and then, and then from there is diving in and asking yourself, do you have the resources to actually recruit? This is by the way, this slide right here is a 15 minute conversation at work asking these questions. Who am I looking for? Who do we actually need? You as the HR person has to be the one that says, I'm not going to start working on it until I fully understand it. Okay. It's okay to do that because that one extra day of cha of challenging and being patient will save you months of recruiting. And then doing your homework real quick. We're going to show you exactly how, what's the next slide? Is that the next portion here? Where are we here? Okay. Perfect. Um, you can leave that up actually. So that's fine. Um, really. So in that 15 minute conversation to sum up that first slide, these are my three favorite questions. Take a picture of this. Everyone take a picture of this. You need, this is very important. This to me, slide deck after? I'm, I don't think we're going to be sharing the slide deck. No, take a picture. Feel free to take a picture, do whatever you want. Um, very, very right. Even write these questions down out of anything. Keep it simple. Someone comes to your desk saying I'm hiring. You're going to ask, 
Well, one, where if you once you understand the position, you're going to say, where is my ideal candidate? How many times do we put up an Indeed posting and the right person just never applies? Happens a lot. I'm getting some head nodding. Am I relating to some people? So why do you keep doing it over and over again, thinking that someone will just apply? Or, um, or vice versa, sometimes, so at the end of the day, you have to ask, where is my ideal candidate? Is I, I love you guys are, as most of you guys are in the Old Castle area. There's a couple like hubs in, in the manufacturing space. Most, most guys in the trades, they love going to Chuck's Roadhouse on a, on a Friday for lunch. They like going to Chicharro Club for pizzas. You just see guys with steel toe boots all the time. You have to ask yourself that question of maybe where, where, where physically are they? Maybe they're all having lunch at Chicharro because it's, what is it, the Tuesdays is the, they got the, the buffet going on certain days. Maybe it's, hey, I'm going to go have lunch over there and just meet some guys. And over the next couple months, I'll find the right person. Right? You have to ask yourself, that's where the creativity comes in by asking that first question. Where is my ideal candidate? Once you physically know where they are, just go there. Okay? Um, then, uh, uh, would, would my candidate, this is the big, most important one. Would my ideal person apply or do we have to go find them? So this is for very high level positions. Okay? There are some positions where we know, put up a posting, it'll be fine. But what, sometimes, most times, a lot of people are chasing, thinking a job posting will do the trick when really, the right person, a senior executive, a VP, a manager, a director, or an extremely high-end uh, um, pr production supervisor, they're awesome. Like, they'll never apply. I think most of the people in this room, they're not applying for positions because you guys are very high level. Like, one was, I can't point, point you, actually, you're the owner of the company. I can't ask you that question. Who's, what do you do for, for a living? Engineering you're an engineering manager. When was the last time you looked up a job posting? Don't pretend your boss is in here. <laughs> Two hours ago. Two hours ago. He's he's a high value person for you, right? You've been with the company for how long? Four years. Four years. Okay. So for someone, so what's your name, sir? John. John. For someone like John, he's very high up in the company. You're what? You're I imagine you're you're one of the managers. Great. So he's got it good. He's got it made. He's got a great relationship with the owner. He's never going to apply. But if you're going to go and try, you need a John. Well, there's a lot of Johns that are in this scenario that are, they're never going to see a job posting. So you have to ask yourself, is this, should we even bother with a job posting or should we figure out how for us to find names and reach out ourselves? Okay. We're going to get into head hunting a little bit here. Fair point, right, John? Like you're never going to find, go looking for a job yourself. But if someone came up to you, pretend your boss is in here for a minute and said, Hey, we have something. That's the only way to get to you, right? Cause you're never going to actually submit uh, an application. Fair. And, and all of you guys could, can, can relate to that. Um, and then, and then the last question, very important is, do we catch their attention? That falls on the whole research behind the job. If we're going to approach someone, or if someone's going to apply to us, are we competitive? Do we look good? Right? So as an HR person, this is the most important three questions you could ask that sums up my last point. So we'll go to the next step. I, 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 I spent a little time on this because it's the beginning. If you don't get the first two slides, right? Good luck. Good luck. Like it's very, very, it's, it's now you're just playing literally with luck. You're hoping to find the right person. Can we all agree with that? Did I just, what I shared with you, it's, it sounds a little common sense, but can we agree that that was very important? Okay. So please take, if you were to take anything back, one little note is really focus on the beginning. Don't rush to just act on something. Don't be reactive. This makes you proactive. Um, now we're going to dive into the tools to elaborate on what I just mentioned. You good? Yes. Okay. Um, we're going to dive into Indeed because obviously Indeed is the most important, the biggest platform. You guys, who here is using Indeed currently, has used Indeed? I'd imagine almost everybody. Do you guys spend money on Indeed? Do you guys have a budget? No. Is there people, is there anyone here spending money on Indeed? Just raise your hand a little bit. Okay. Um, it's not bad and it's not good at the same time. You don't need to. Um, it's sometimes Indeed is very good. They're, they're a billion dollar company because they're very good at getting you to spend money there. So we figured out the art of, of not having to spend money. We're going to show a couple, couple little tricks. Now, on the topic of research, why don't we just jump right on in, into Indeed? I talked about doing market research. Has anyone heard of Hiring Insights on Indeed? One person. Has anyone ever used Hiring Insights on Indeed? Okay. Regularly, like every day. If you're in HR, you got to be using it like every day. I'm, I'm calling people out here today just because I'm really bringing up the importance of this. This is free knowledge. So when you guys go on Indeed... Right on the side, you guys recognize this for everyone who's using Indeed daily. On the sidebar, on your profile, you see all your jobs and all that, and you're going to see analytics on the side there, okay? 
go analytics, and then you're going to go hiring insights. Indeed is better than Google, better than the best search engine in the world when it comes to live data on the market. Okay, so why don't we go ahead, Theodore, just do your thing as far as Windsor. Give us something in the manufacturing world or um, mold, etc. cetera. Yeah, um, anything. Give me a manufacturing engineer. Why not? The output... What, is, what do you mean, no data? Go. Give, give me a CNC machinist. Give me, we've talked CNC machinist. Give me a CNC machinist. Okay, so you could go, you could, by the way, you could just do Windsor. You don't have, you could either do just the position and look across the world or, or you could do by city. You could play around with this, right? And the type of information is very important. So why don't we get to the juicy part? As far as competition, so it's 50%, it's up there. Everyone's kind of looking for one and two people are looking for it. You're going to see in Windsor how many job postings are up right now. I'm going to jump over here. How many job postings, how many job seekers are out there? Keep going. Um, the biggest thing I like getting into is right here, average salaries. Okay, you've got your extremes. Does that look about right? Is there anybody here that's like right now is like, oh, my God, we're slaving our CNC machines for $27. You're paying less or more, right? So keep going. Keep going. This is where I get really excited because I get to see the top employers. This is where you see your competitors. There's center line right there. You guys are the seventh in Windsor, the seventh seventh place for the most hiring for that specific position. Who's number one? Southwest Manufacturing. Do we have Southwest Manufacturing here? You do? You're here? Where are you? Is there Southwest Manufacturing? No? Okay, that's fine. But you get to see your, it's, everything's there. I'm teaching you guys, I know we're being friendly today, but you guys are competing. I'm, make, I'm, I'm going to be kind of a little aggressive here. I'm going to show you guys are competing against each other. And now I'm going to get you guys to learn how to spy on each other a little bit, right? You can see each company, what they're doing. And you can see which, what are the positions for. So CNC, CNC machines, all the different keywords. And this is, this just in a glance, like it's only been two minutes. Keep going, keep scrolling. You've got resumes on the bottom. Um, you've got... Years of experience, what's the average applicants? Like this is great data that you could right away just most common employers, most common locations. We could all agree data helps making decisions, right? Wouldn't that be helpful? And all it took is just two minutes. Okay, you gotta do it. It's very important. So that's tool number one. So sticking on Indeed, so I'm gonna get Avery to come in for a minute here. I'm gonna introduce you guys to Avery. Avery is our, our superstar of, of a recruiter. She's the one that is dealing directly with our customers hand in hand, and she's the one dealing with everybody's Indeed stuff. Um, I'm going to pass it on to her for a minute as far as when you're putting up a job posting on Indeed. Since all of you guys are looking for a CNC machinist or the similar things, how do you make your job posting the most appealing? Okay, so why don't, why don't we dive in with Avery for a minute? So when you're putting a posting up on Indeed, Indeed, like Christian was saying, is automatically going to say, like, spend money, you get more candidates. It's not always the case. I know if you put up a, a posting within the first day or two, you're going to get the most candidates. And you've probably all seen that if you're working in HR, that day one and two, you are flooded with candidates. Say you're hiring a quality inspector or something like that, where the job description is pretty broad and there could be a lot of people. You might get a hundred applicants in a day um, where Indeed will want you to spend on more is when you're hiring like an engineering manager and there's not many people applying. It pushes it to the front of everyone's um, Indeed. So when they're going on, that's the first thing that they see. You can do this without having to pay for it by just posting it more often. Say you're, you post it today, you have it up for a week, you have candidates that come in but you're not interested in talking to any of them. Take it fully down, repost it. I know most people put up a posting and they just let it live out its life cycle until you find someone. You don't, you're not re constantly posting it. That's the first easy thing that you can do to make sure that your job is always the first that candidates see when they're going on to Indeed because the longer it's on there, the further down on Indeed it gets pushed. Um, the next thing is making sure that the title is accurate and what people are searching for. If you have a job title that's very specific to your company, but it could translate to something that 
someone else is doing at another company that is pretty similar, you could want to hire them eventually. Um, you could post mul multiple job postings with different job titles just because it's what people are searching or making sure that the job description has those keywords in it so it's popping up on people's Indeed when they're searching those. And the hiring insights will show you um, what Christian just showed you, all like the, the keywords on there. Those are things that you should make sure that you're including in your job posting. Um, another thing is social media, driving traffic to there. So whether you're posting things on LinkedIn for more um, people to see it, like for high level positions, they're more looking on LinkedIn. But when you're posting a job on LinkedIn, using uh, the jobs thing where people can apply to it, those are mostly going to people overseas that are applying on there. So if you're posting it on there with the link to Indeed, people can see it, grab that and post right on and apply right through there. Um, so those are the yeah, three. That's pretty that's much it. everything. Thanks, Avery. So again, it's it's a marketing campaign. It's not a recruitment campaign. It's you're, you're thinking outside of the box. What Avery is saying is, in a marketing campaign, you know, if, if I'm selling a hot tub to somebody, maybe certain videos will catch my attention, but it'll be different for you, for example, right? It's how do you catch their attention? So you don't have to have just one job posting for one position. You could have multiple just titled differently because it'll appeal to different people. You just never know what the, the title or the words they use for one posting. It's free anyways. You can put up as many posts as you want. It could, in reality, it's one position. Have it looking differently. A couple different postings catch, catch different people's attention. And more so on the social media side, each posting has a link. Everyone's on social media. We know that. Okay, everyone's on Instagram, Facebook, whatever. Even just getting your team, like even just on the management side, texting people saying, hey, guys, this is the link for this posting. Can you please put it up on your personal social media? Say we're looking for somebody. And just sharing that on social media. That That is like no one does that. No one's doing it. And it's, it's where everyone's looking. Right. Um, so, so again, it comes back to where's my ideal candidate? Where are they? Are they on social media? Then we should probably have our indeed posting posted on there, right? Just post the link and have people see it. So, okay, next we're going to get into LinkedIn. This is to me, one of my favorite parts of this presentation, because I know for a fact, none of you know what I'm about to tell you. Okay. I just hyped it up and now I really got to deliver. Okay. So, um, let's just, let's just jump right, go right to LinkedIn. Now we're talking about, we were talking about John and we got to reach out to John, right? Or to, to I know Mike, you're, you're a manager, right? As well. We got to reach out to high level people that, that aren't going to apply. So now we're looking at how do we find them online? LinkedIn is obviously the place that all recruiters, HR people go. Now, a lot of people don't, don't know the algorithms, algorithms of LinkedIn and how to actually do a really qualified search. So actually, sorry, Teodora, can you go back to the, 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 the PowerPoint? I just want to show everybody this section here, this portion right here. And there's a bit of a code. So with every, has it, and let me know if anyone here has seen this with every word that you look up, you got to have, what are these called again? Colons, not colons. No, no, no. The quotations, the double quotations and the words either and, or or not. Everyone write this down. So every word you're looking up, you're doing like a control control F, right? So it's, just, it's the same thing on LinkedIn. Whatever words you want to look for, you're looking for a general manager, engineering manager, you want to put that in double quotations. If you have multiple terms, so uh, um, general manager and uh, sales experience, you want to put those words in there. You have to have them in quotations with the words are either and or or not. Okay, so I could want a general manager with something, but not with something else. And those, the words and, or, or not have to be capitalized. You do that just at the top of, of LinkedIn. So now we're going to give you a little bit of a demonstration here. Um, Teodora, go ahead. You take the floor. So. Put the word and in between. Is your profile uh, premium or is this a it doesn't, you don't have to have premium. You don't have to have premium. Obviously premium helps. I think once sometimes I create an audience that's like 500 people. 
So let's say if, if I am looking for somebody and I do it across, I know it's not in Windsor and I'm doing a search across Canada. Okay. I am going to have maybe a list of a thousand. Having premium will help because now the messaging, it allows you to only add so many people if you have a regular amount, but if you have a premium amount, you could just connect to unlimited people. So that's, that's the only part where the, the premium helps. Yeah. So you can see here, I searched general manager and machine and then yep. I clicked on people. Yep. And this 136,000, 116,000, 116, yep. Uh, now we want to narrow this down, so we're going to select location. Put multiple. Now this narrows it down, we've got 85 people in that area that have general manager or mach and machine in their uh, LinkedIn profiles. Okay. Down. Is there anybody here that sees themselves? Let me know, I'm curious. You popped up on there? <laughs> so so what it's what we're doing is if those words are on your profile, it's like a control F is what we're doing. Right? Um, there you go. There's Mike. I'm gonna headhunt the shit out of you, Mike. Like now I found you. I'm going after you, right? So so there's an example, and this is where you play with all the filters. So just click all filters there. You put in your words, and we're always playing, again, it's marketing, right? We're playing with the words, we're putting the words and, or, not, whatever, and I'm trying to come up with a list. For us, we're doing it on steroids. Like, I want a list of a thousand people, because we're gonna, we're gonna bomb all of them. Like, I wanna go after everybody. We have the luxury and the capacity to do that. Um, for you guys, if you're looking for something specific, you know, a list of a hundred, now you know, hey, there's a hundred people locally to us. With this information, you could filter by past companies there. If I want to find out, every, click Valiant. I want to see past company. I know Valiant's in the room. Where are you guys? There you are. Let's see everybody you guys have fired or quit on you. <laughs> right? So there's the list. Right? And I could, so if I wanted, so I, I know for a fact because I have customers in, in your industry, they tell me I want someone that used to work at Valiant. I swear to God, this comes every, just last week we had that, that question, right? So um, we'll do that. Like we'll literally do that. So now you could, those are just some more tools. I, I did say in the beginning, I know something that you guys don't. Is there anybody here that knows what I just showed? Yes, they got it. <laughs> they got it. Okay, I knew it. So so that is also a very, very important tool that you at your desk could, again, how long did that take us? Three minutes, five minutes yeah. with me just hyping it up and putting on a show for you too. So really in two minutes, you're going to be able to bang this out and have another way of finding people. Okay. Next, so what's the, what's what are we talking about next on the slide here? Okay, the headhunting side. So we went from job postings to now reaching out to people, and we got to talk about a little bit of headhunting and my rules behind it. We talk about poaching or my competitor Valiant stole my my people, right? <laughs> I'm pointing. Yes, <laughs> I'm working. <laughs> what, co what company are you from, sir? What company are you from? You're a center. Oh gosh! Put you guys right beside each other. I love it. What's your name? Uh, Daryl. Daryl, nice to meet you, Daryl. So, this is my rules of. This is a small town at the end of the day, okay? And I'm going to give you guys the ground rules of. I don't even like the word headhunting, but I use it just because that's. So I, I know people know what I'm talking about. What what I want to what I want you guys to think of is problem and solution, okay? And even think about yourselves personally. And you have to look at the business. The business has a problem they need to solve. They know the right person they have to approach. We all know that we have those circumstances. It's inevitable. We have to do it. Whether it's someone locally or whether it's somebody in a different company outside of Windsor that we have to relocate. At the same time, a guy like John, a guy like Mike, a guy like Daryl, he's got his life going on. You know, how long have you been with the company for, Daryl? Long time? 20 years. Okay. Guy like John, guy like Mike. Everyone has personal lives and things change in people's lives. The reality is, even with my staff, I know their their lives will change over time. One day they'll get married, one day they'll have kids, one day they'll this will happen, one day will this will happen. The dynamic of our lives will change. You know, someone will pass away in our family, everything, our personal lives changes. So sometimes the opportunity you're in right now. Okay, and don't be surprised, Daryl, because I have people that are 20 years at the same company. They come to me saying, I'm ready for a change. I've done my part my 20 years. 
done my four years, but I think I've personally in my life, something has to change. Those people are out there. Okay. There's nothing wrong with reaching somebody. I gave you guys an idea on, on, uh, uh, LinkedIn on how to do it. Or if it's in person, if you meet somebody at your Charo club during a buffet and you're talking with them, your objective as whether you're a business owner, a manager, or an HR person, your headhunting mindset is I'm meeting people all the time. And if somebody is the talent we need and they work at another company, it's not all about just, hey, I'll pay you more and let me try to steal you. The more powerful question to ask is, are you happy at home? That's, that's how I headhunt. Are you happy at home? Is everything in your life perfect? Or when you come home, the wife's yelling at you about something, you're working too late or, or whatever. The things that, re the real things that happen at home, right? Is, is the commute, you're tired of it. And every time you got to leave work because you got to pick up the kids and all that, where before that wasn't an issue. Okay. We, I'm not an HR business. I'm a recruitment company. So HR rules don't apply to me. So, so please, this is not an HR seminar. This is, this is a recruitment seminar. Okay. Being real and being a human and learning about people's lives. All you have to do is say, well, I can make your life better. I just had, uh, we did this amazing, um, transition for this wonderful woman. She worked at company A for 17 years and, um, she, her kids now just went to university and she's ready to just, she's like, I just want 30 hour weeks now. They're working 50 hours, whatever. She's like on a Friday, I just want to golf with my husband. I love the company that I work for, but I wear too many hats and I'm just looking for a place to be where I can do this, this, this. Whereas for company B, they wanted her specifically and they're like, what does she want? What lifestyle does she want? It wasn't more money. It was simply, hey, she just wants a 30 hour week. She physically can't ask for a 30 hour week at her current employer. Just offer her that. And that was the transition. You solve the problem for that person. So, and you just put an opportunity out there. You met the right person, you solve their problem, and it's the next best thing in their life. Nobody, if you truly feel that the company you're at is where you need to be, you'll never leave. And you as an HR person need to recognize that. You need to see, okay, this person's staying. We're not taking them. But it's okay to talk to people. It's okay to talk to people. And if you guys could be a solution for each other, they could solve your problem by being the perfect candidate. You could solve their problem by, it's, this is the personal life side of things, the headhunting. Solve, give their personal life, make their personal life a little bit better. You just, you didn't poach, you didn't steal, you actually just were meant to be. That's the reality of it. Because the current company could never offer it. That simple. Okay. And you did everybody a favor. The most likely they were going to leave that company anyways. Fair? At some point in time, there's always the last straw of, okay, you know what? I need to leave because I'm not 100%. The personal life always, there's no such thing as work life separation. It's all the same. Your job makes your personal life. If you're happy at home, you most likely have a happy job. Okay. Can we all agree with that? Is that fair to say? Yes. And on that note, then do you recruit people on dating apps? I'm the king of that. <laughs> I'm the man of that. <laughs> I'm always. <laughs> you have no idea these girls. I don't. I'm not. I'm, I'm. I'm stopping myself. I'm not saying that part. Always the dating apps. Like, hey, I found a CNC machine. It's on Tinder. Like, <laughs> it's it happens. But um, I like the creativity. But yes. So okay, let's go to the next slide. Um. Where are we? Recruitment process. Okay. So how much, how are we doing on time? I have a question. Does everyone, does anyone here have a hard stop at one? Is there anybody who have a hard stop at one? Just a couple people. Okay. I'm, I'm, we're going to really, I'm, I want to wrap this up for my end of 50 minutes to make sure I got Jeff in the back has his time. I don't want him rushed. So, okay. Only a couple people. If you got to go at one, but the rest are you okay. If we go five, 10 minutes over, you're all right with that. Okay. Perfect. Um, let's talk about what are we doing? The recruitment process. So now, You've learned a couple different ways on, you've, you sat down, you researched a job, you know what you're going to do. You haven't, at this point, you haven't even recruited yet. We haven't started. Okay. You've done all this back end homework. You looked at the tools that you have. You decided I'm going to use LinkedIn. I'm going to use Indeed, et cetera, blah, 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 blah. And now we're here. Now we're going to start. So the biggest th mistake that companies make is they don't actually have a recruitment process. They think they do, but they actually don't. And let me, let me dive into that. I want to, why don't we, let's go to the next slide. I want to get right into, right into it. It's the next, yes, perfect. So I've got, the way I have this thing structured here, I know it looks like a lot of words. It starts on this side and it goes this way. I got the two words that I have here is qualifications, personality. Qualifications, personality. These are percentages, okay? You've got pre-screening, you've got initial interview and final interview. And if you notice, the percentages change over top, okay? 
The biggest thing that I find, so who here is the HR person? They're the only HR person in the whole company. Okay, they're the only ones. You have one person doing it all in one meeting. They put up a job posting and they're trying to figure it all out in one meeting most of the time. And then maybe there's one more meeting after that. Am I relating to everybody here? We're all seeing that. That, that is where you're set to fail, especially with a business that's so dynamic, just like your guys were. There's always things happening. Um, several positions at the same time. You have to, this is the bread and butter of our business. Some businesses, they can't physically do this because you need three separate people for this to be effective. This is where some businesses, they choose to use us. This isn't a sales pitch. I'm just explaining to you guys some of the problem that we solve here. This is where one single person who's not just the recruiter, is the HR person and has a million things on their plate. They don't have to, time to do a pre-screening call followed by an initial interview followed by a second interview. It's a lot of work, especially with, I don't know, how, how many positions do you have up right now? Do you know? Four, five, ten, whatever, roughly. How much? How many? Forty-five. And who's, who's the person dealing with all forty-five? One person. Okay, good luck. So you know exactly what I'm talking about. Where How are you going to have three separate meetings with one candidate, 45 positions? You're, you're going to go through a 1,000 candidates in order to find the 45 people you actually need. Okay? She's going to, poor woman's going to get killed. Like, honestly, it's, sorry. <laughs> but that's the truth. It's happening. I'm sure there's more people in the room that could relate to her, right? Yes? Yes? Okay. This is where everything goes wrong with the interview process. You must have a pre-screener. That's one person. This could be anybody. Anybody, the, the lowest set, you could hire somebody for $15 an hour and hire them to just, your job is to take all the initial resumes pre-screen, okay? Then the next step is your, what, what's your title? Talent. Talent acquisition. You are here and only here. Your pre-screener is going to take, so for those 45 positions, you probably have how many applicants if you're a guest? I'm going to guess close to 1,000, if not more. Okay, and you're going through all of them? God bless you. So <laughs> what I would do if I was restructuring your organization, I'd say hire her an assistant. Hire her an assistant. You're going to love me. You're going to love me by the end of this. Okay, hire her an assistant to go through the pre-screen so she doesn't burn out. The purpose of the, the pre-screening, you have to design what are the three questions I'm going to ask just by looking at her resume. Hey, do you, I just want to verify your experience. Do you have this, this, this? This much years of experience, you can use this tool, whatever, you design those three questions. These pre-screen calls are two minutes long. Perfect. You, you match our initial qualifications. Can I book you in for an interview? Yes. Today at three o'clock, you're going to meet with, what's your name? Yeah. Michaela. You're going to meet with Michaela. Michaela, you're now taking that list of a thousand and it's honing in with those 45 positions. You're now just, you're dealing with two to three to 10 maximum on per position, right? And that's, your calendar is only booked with now it's already been pre-screened. Okay? You don't have to waste your time with those phone calls with random people that are just applying. Your purpose, so that was 100% qualification, no personality. Your role is going to be, now that you understand the position a lot more and you understand the why and you understand what the company is trying to do, you, bet you verify the qualifications, but you also talk personality. You start touching on the culture a little bit. Okay? And that's where you, the gut feeling starts saying, I like this person. And then you pass it on to who would be, it would be a hiring manager with whatever department would be the final interview, okay? That is like as simple as it sounds. Like it, it's not rocket science. It's, it's just taking the time of realizing, hey, this is the reality. How could one person handle so much? That's how you structure an interview process and you design questions in each aspect. And the purpose of, one thing I hate is when you have the final interview person who's doing this job. You send them a resume and they're like, I don't like it. They just, do you have hiring managers that you send them a resume and say, I don't want to meet them? Okay. That's unacceptable. It's unacceptable. I yell at my customers all the time for doing that. Okay. It's unacceptable. Why? Because we've had two people talk to them on the phone. Who are you to go off the piece of paper? You have to trust. They have to trust you. So you have to earn that trust. You have to say, no, I'm not even, as a matter of fact, most times with our customers, we don't send a resume until I know I've got a booked time. Then I'll send you a resume. Okay. Because you have to change the mindset. Okay. And you have to tell that person, Hey, listen, you're going to 20% just triple check the qualifications. But from there, you're going to be working with that person. It has to be all culture. Okay. That's, that's our recruitment process. I just shared with you guys our secret. So, so th that's what it is. So my two, my two pieces of advice to kind of close off on this is hire slow, fire fast and hire with your gut. It's the most important thing. And we all know our gut feeling. Has it ever, has it ever told us anything that wasn't right? 
Okay. Higher with your gut, higher, slow, fire, fast. I've, I'm, what I'm teaching us is slow it down a little bit, do the initial homework, and then hammer away with, you know, have the right system, have three separate people, and then your odds have increased. Let's go to the next, what's the next portion of it? I'm almost done. Okay. So at this point in time, we've now done the recruitment process. By the way, you know what? I really like the last slide. This to me is the most, is there any thoughts, comments, questions here? Did I hit a bit of a home run with you guys a little bit here? Make you guys rethink. I want everyone who's in management to go and if their HR person isn't here, to go back and ask them, hey, like, are you, is this humanly possible for you to pre-screen over a thousand people and do, like, you gotta, you gotta do them a favor. Okay? You gotta look at reality. And, and that's, that's just what it is. So maybe put, put yourself in their shoes and try to go through a thousand resumes yourself. You're gonna realize, holy crap, that's a lot of work. Right? And then when you're, when your HR person is overwhelmed and a lot of work, then they start, cutting on quality and that's when they start saying, okay, here's a bunch of resumes here. Let me know which one you like. And then the care goes out of it. You have to have the element of care. So you can't overwhelm the person that is doing it for you. And if you really, really can't come up with a solution, that's when you call me and I'll fix it for you. I promise. That's my sales pitch for the day. So, <laughs> um, so now we'll transition to retention. You've gone through a great interview process. You found the right person. I'm just going to share with you one little, little story of, of, one, so one in five people, they quit their job within their first week, day. We see, how many times have we seen that where we finally say we found somebody and then within a week or two, they're gone. Does that happen to everybody? Yes? We're getting some head nods? All right. Sometimes it's not the person. Sometimes it's you. What I'm here to teach you today is you have to put the odds in your favor. Everything that you could control, pay attention to it. Okay? Sometimes there are things out of our control. Okay. Some, you know, we had a, we have, have a current scenario where somebody, you know, we thought we were going to bring them in, but then their wife's pregnant. So then they're like, I can't relocate anymore. Like things like that happen. It's out of our control. But what's in our control is the experience along the way. So right now you've designed for them a great experience in the recruitment side of things. Now they're here at your door. The re, in order for you guys to decrease your retention, you don't want one in five people quitting. First impressions matter. Give you a very good example. Um, if I even, and it's not even work related. If I was throwing a house party with all of us, if we just turn this all into one big party, right? And people are coming in. And if I, if our party was happening, you ever gone to a party where like you don't know anybody, but no one like greeted you, no one took your coat, no one introduced you to anybody. And maybe it's a networking event where it feels a little bit awkward at first, where it's like, I don't know anyone here. We've been in a similar type of a scenario. Because know what I'm talking about? That weird feeling of like, I don't know anyone and no one's kind of giving me what's the next thing I got to do or and holding the way, especially with a big company, like I know there's a bunch of big companies here, we forget about that element. We think it's just, yep, they're starting, pump them in. And then that's where it could be their first day. They just didn't feel like they were welcome. At the end of the day, your business is your home and you're welcoming someone into your home. When you invite someone to your house, you make sure that you're there ready, you look good, you open the door for them, welcome, let me show you around, let me show you the place. Hey, this is this person who's here. I want you, you guys will get along very well. You're, you're being hospitable. Hospitable, is that the right word? Yeah, I'm an engineer, so English is my second language, and I'm an immigrant, immigrant so <laughs> <laughs> it matters. So um, it's all about just making someone feel special in the beginning. Make sure you have that in place in your onboarding. It's not about, oh, welcome to the company. Here's your badge and you got to go do eight hours of HR training. You could get to that in a minute. Come introduce them to someone. Hey, uh, Mike, this is John. John, he's been with us for four years. Mike, you guys, and John, you guys are going to get along and John knew you were starting. He's going to be your person who you work with and ask him any questions you want about the company, whatever. You guys are your buddies. They, you, I've established John as he's my my, uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Like the, the, the mentor, the guide, like my helper to welcome Mike in, right? Things like that. Asking your existing employees to welcome people in and to not make them feel overwhelmed, unwelcomed, or make it feel awkward. Okay. Cause it's, it's a, it's a, ch it's a change in their life. It's a change in your life. So that's all I have on the retention side. There's, there's a million other things that you guys could Google and YouTube, but really the human touch, the human element alone, when someone goes back home on their first, when, when you get a job, and you go back home to your spouse, what's the first question? First day of work, what's the first question she's going to ask you when you come home? What's the first question? You, you start working for me today. You go home. How was, how was your first day? How did it go? And when they say, I met this guy, Mike. He was awesome. They were so welcoming. They were so kind. I'm so happy. Think you're going to quit? No. But just imagine how one in five people come home and they're like, it was a shit show. <laughs> like, I, I, didn't, I didn't know anything. So that's in your control. 
Am I speaking the truth here? You believe what I'm saying here? Am I saying something that's foreign? Yes? Okay. You're in control of that process. It's a process. Make sure you have it in place. That's all I'm saying there. And I think we're, I think I'm done my piece. Okay. Call me if you need me. That's it. So I'm going to introduce Jeff Nansen because now you've hired somebody. There's some paperwork behind Jeff. I'm going to introduce Jeff. He's from, uh, Jeff Nansen's a partner at Musso DeLuco. Come on up. Come on up, Jeff. I'll, I'll give you, give you the floor here. Now we're going to get into, yeah, I don't need a clap. Thank you. We'll do it at the end. Save, save it at the end. But, uh, um, I want to make sure that now that you've found the right person, you got to onboard them correctly. Yeah. You got some record keeping, an offer letter, you got contracts, et cetera. Jeff's going to make sure that that process is going to go smooth all the way to the end of, of, of that. Okay. We're good with that one, Jeff. Jeff, go ahead, buddy. Shops, shops all yours. Thanks guys. I appreciate you. I promise you will be out here by one o'clock. Uh, and one